Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Sports Writers. I'm Bill Newell from MSO News Sports. We have Phil Stacy, Giannino, Matt Williams from the Salem News, Nick Pukaru of the Gloucester Times, here here on um, weekly at uh, an MSO News Sports, but also at SalemNews.com. And uh, Bill, welcome. And uh, you know, I before we go to the um, winter sports. And this will post on Tuesday, the 21st, which is the uh, first official day of winter, so to speak. Let's let's have you wrap up one final note or two on fall. And I know we've talked about the All-Stars for the last couple of weeks here, yeah. Salem News Fall All-Stars. But you also, uh, last Friday, announced the Salem News Coaches of the Year for the fall. So maybe some thoughts on that that piece for us. Sure. Um yeah, so we obviously like to recognize uh, coaches um, who we deem to be, you know, have done the, the best, and I'll put air quotes around that job uh, in the fall. Uh, that can be as difficult, honestly, as picking some of the all-stars themselves, um, because there are a lot of really good candidates. And I'll take football for an example. Um, any number of guys could have won our football star um, coach of the year. I mean, you had... Jim Rudloff leading his team to its first ever Super Bowl, undefeated season. You know, they've won 20 in a row, best in the state. Bob Serino, uh, back-to-back Super Bowls. You know, if you back-to-back playoff uh, appearances, back-to-back Super Bowls. Uh, you had the job that uh, Jim Pugh did in Hamilton Wenham, turning around a team that had won two games in the spring, and they won eight games uh, this fall. Matt Bouchard, uh, Salem was winless. They turn around and they win six games this fall. Um who am I forgetting, Willie? Jeff Hutton did a really nice job coming into Beverly. Gavin Monagle did a great job uh, at Mass Kanawha. They won seven out of their 10 games. Uh, Mark Bettencourt and his team had another really good uh, season. You know, he's kept it going with the Tanners, and they won a, a NEC Lynch title. Um, who am I forgetting, Willie? Uh, that's pretty much everybody. Did you mention Jim Pugh? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy, yeah. Uh, Bob Serino. I mean, that's uh, Dave Woods. I mean, that's that's pretty Dave much. Woods. The yeah, there you go. I mean, Dave you know, Woods. We 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 wrote a whole column, uh, you know, midway through the season about how everyone, uh, you know, was really doing an amazing job coaching, and there were no shortage of good candidates. And uh, I remember at the time, uh, PBD and Essex Tech were the only two coaches I didn't make a case for, and. Uh, you know, of course, Essex Tech won three of its last four and Peabody won its last six in a row. <laughs> so that only adds uh, candidates to the mix, right? We ultimately went with uh, Mike Flynn at Pengree. And, and I'll tell you why. I did have a few people that I know that kind of follow um, Northeastern Conference sports. And they asked me, you know, geez, hey, I'm surprised you went with Mike Flynn and all. And it was like, well, you know, uh, same thing I'm saying now. It's not easy, but ultimately... Uh, Willie and I kind of made the choice that his was the only team around here that did not have any season whatsoever in the 2020 and or fall two season. Pingree didn't play at all. So when they got on the field in late August, it was literally for the first time in like 22 months that they had gotten together to play. And um, they went undefeated. They won a great game, their final regular season game with like seconds to play to beat another undefeated team. Um, they went to yet another bowl game. They won their second straight prep school bowl game in overtime by, was it a point, Willie? By 34-33 they won, I want to say? Uh, yeah, I, I want to say they scored first and, and then kicked the point and the other team went for two and they stopped them. So it was a... Um... It was sort of like a Jim Harbaugh, but, uh, you know, where it's actually in overtime, I think you give the coach a little bit of, uh, you know, leeway. Where uh, John Harbaugh, sorry, for the Ravens, you know, he went for two to win it at the end of regulation, whereas, you know, the other guy, uh, in a row. <laughs> Pingree's opponent there went for it in overtime, which I think is a little bit more excusable because, you know, you're trying to win and right. the following overtime, they're going to make you go for two anyway, so you might as well just do it now type of thing, so you know, not, not to get off track, but, um, but yeah, they ended up stopping the two point conversion in overtime and, and winning uh, at home. Very cool. Nine and O season, the second one in school history. Right. right. Uh, so very impressive job by those guys and, and their whole staff. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Rob Ventoul, Marty Cook, the, the whole crew over there. Did Andy Williams. Yeah, Andy. Yeah. Yep, exactly. It's funny. You know, I, the people, 
the few people that I heard from, uh, you know, maybe we travel in different circles, but but they said, hey, great call by you guys. We know they do a great job over there and, and they don't often get enough credit. And, and, you know, the impression I got was, you know, we kind of showed that we're paying attention, you know, not just going with the obvious choice to, out of the conference, uh, you know, so that was good to hear from uh, some of our sources. Maybe I need to get some more optimistic uh, people emailing me, I guess. You know? <laughs> I mean, it could be. It, well, this, this, this could be, you know. Um, but, but some of our other coaches um, were, uh, I will, I'll say, a little bit easier. You know, we had a, a state champion in volleyball, so that was a pretty easy choice to go with Stacey Sonke in Ipswich. Um, we had a state finalist in field hockey, also Ipswich, uh, Nikki Pignoni. Um, our our cross-country coaches of the year, I mean, Dave Johnson has probably won it more time than uh, Bill Russell has rings. Uh, he, he's won it quite a few times, and Jeff Bartlett for Danvers was a first time winner. Did a nice job with the Danvers boys. Um, Nino, you want to talk about uh, Marblehead winning the boys soccer and how you came to that? Yeah, well, same type deal, uh, you know, as football with the boys soccer. I think there was a lot of worthy candidates. Um, you know, you had Masco have that unbeaten run, 20 and 0, and obviously they fell short in the playoffs. Still a, another terrific season for them. Uh, obviously the press. Um, you know, had their ups and downs during the regular season, but were able to reel off a couple of tournament victories and had a great chance to, to go all the way in that bracket. Um, but I, I ultimately landed on Marblehead um, just for the simple fact that I think not a lot of people expected much from them this year. They have a, a new coach in Elmer Magana who comes over from El Salvador, I believe. He's been here for, for quite a while now. He was a JV coach beforehand and took the reins as the head coach over there and they had a uh, quietly a really good season in the NEC which well you know it was very competitive Kukru can uh, you know vouch for that too with with Gloucester boys I know they had a good season but you know overall the NEC was very competitive and uh, they held their own they, they made a playoff uh, they you know they clinched the playoff berth they went over 500 they picked up a win in the playoffs in the first round nobody probably thought they were going to do that and then they almost upset the number four seed um in their bracket in Plymouth uh, before, you know, coming up one goal short. But I, I just thought the job that he did with the group that he had um, and in terms of expectations heading into the season and all that, um, you know, I thought he was a good choice. I want to say, too, the man is a must follow on Twitter. It, it's um, it's MHDB soccer. He is just positive all the time, encouraging every single sport and, and you know, in Marblehead and, and beyond. I mean, this guy is a great Twitter follower, uh, co Coach uh, Elmer there. So I would encourage everybody to check out that page and give him a follow because it's uh, it'll brighten up your day. Yeah, very what, positive, what, man. What's yeah. that? Uh, what's that Twitter handle again, Matt? MHDB? MHD as in Marblehead, B as in boys, soccer. Just all squished together. No spaces, as it were. All right. All right. I got that. Um, <laughs> new then, uh, new coach of the year, too, for uh, golf. And then in golf, yeah, I was going to get to that. Um, kind of a no-brainer for the golfers. Uh, St. John's Prep won the Division One state championship, which they hadn't done in six years. You know, their former coach, Joe Rocha, had a, had a great run with them. They had some really, really good teams, but – we're never able to put it all together and win that state title. And Brian Jacek comes in and they go all the way. You know, they dropped a couple tough matches during the regular season, but then they got hot at the right time and were able to take it all the way to the top. He, he was an easy choice. First year coach for them, taking them all the way to the, to, you know, winning the state championship. Impressive. Hey, and Matt then, and Phil. Uh, Willie, uh, you know, we had another state champion over at Hamilton, one of them with the golf. And uh, Willie, you want to talk about, uh, talk about choosing Nancy Waddell? The for the girls, girls soccer, soccer yeah uh yeah just just you know easy choice i mean i think that was sort of a situation where ariana bazanson was so far and away the best player in the area that uh you know hamilton wenham had to get some hardware for their championship and uh you know obviously coach waddell put it all together with her squad this year i mean 18 games in a row unbeaten uh you know great offense great defense the total package and uh you know, as much as they had senior talent, they brought along some really good young players too to get them ready uh, to, to play big minutes at the end of the year. So just all around a great job uh, uh, over there for sure. Brooks, do you pick coaches of the year when you do your um, KPN All-Stars? 
Uh, no, I don't. I just kind of do boys and girls all stars. But I mean, it's funny. Uh, you know, one who comes to mind. You know, speaking of you know El, Elmer Magani over in Marblehead, his his brother in law is Gloucester coach Armando Marnotto, and he probably right. had the standout season uh, in my area, Gloucester. I think that I think they broke a school record: fifteen regular season wins. Uh, they won a tournament game. Um, you know, they had a player break their uh, all-time single season goal scoring record. So they, they were, they were their, uh, probably the best team uh, around here in the, uh, in the fall season for the boys side. And then on the girls side, yeah, another, you know, another first year coach Courtney Brown at Manchester Essex uh, got a senior list team to the state final four. I mean, that's never anything to, to sneeze at as good as Manchester Essex is every year. Uh, they kind of had to run through a gauntlet to get there. Just a quick note, too. I had a couple people reach out to me wondering why um, Andrew, what, what's his last name there, the Gloucester player, uh, Nick? Hello. Yeah, Andrew Cole. He, um, I had a couple people reach out and wonder why he wasn't on our all-star team. So just to get that out there, that he's not, Gloucester is not in our coverage area here at the Salem News. So I imagine he was a uh, player of the year over that. the Gloucester Times. You can right? say that as much as you want. It's going to fall on deaf ears. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen before, Nick. Yeah, I just, just want to put that on record. No, I've had it happen. I've had it happen. Great player, though. <laughs> I'll say, too, uh, you know, I only saw them play once, Nick, but I know they had a really good season. I thought uh, Courtney Brown did a really nice job with the field hockey team in Manchester Essex. Yeah, sure did. Another, you know, first-year head coach. No seniors, so. Um, no seniors, right. Back uh, making a deep tournament run again next year for sure. You know, as we put our final notes on fall sports and the coaches of the year, AD Tom Gallagher at Ipswich fielding two coaches on the Salem News uh, All-Star team and both um, uh, coaches of the year in both um, field hockey and girls volleyball, as you guys have mentioned. Hey, you guys, uh, Matt or Phil, pick up more on Mike Flynn. Just give our listeners and viewers that don't really know Mike Flynn because he does coach at Penn Green. He's not in the Northeastern Conference or Cape Ann League. I know you guys follow him very closely, but beyond the sports department of the Salem News, give me a little background on Mike Mike Flynn, because he has a pretty, pretty solid football background, doesn't he? Yeah, I, I don't want to uh, mention any of his days uh, at the University of Maine. I'll let uh, his fellow alumnus, Willie, talk about that. But, you know, I think most people know Mike either because he played in the NFL with the Ravens for 11, mostly with the Ravens and won a Super Bowl in that 2000 team. And you can hear him on the weekends on the radio on uh, 98.5. He, he has a weekly uh, weekend radio show. But Mike is a really, really good football coach. I mean, this this wasn't just like, oh, this guy played in the NFL. Let's have him be our coach. No, no, this guy, you know, he's really good. And as are most of our coaches, like he always lets us walk the sidelines uh, when we're at games. And I love uh, the, the chatter that you hear from he and his fellow coaches, how they interact with the players. And you can hear how not only how technical he and his staff are with the plays that they run, but also it, it's always positive, you know, whether it's, um, you know, he, he likes his team playing up-tempo. So it's, you know, he's constantly reminding, go, 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 up-tempo, up-tempo, up-tempo. But also, you know, if there's a, a rare play for a loss or a busted play or, you know, somebody doesn't run the right pass path or whatever, he doesn't get down on his guys. You know, it's all about building up confidence and, and telling him to shake it all off. And, you know, we're good enough. We've been through this a, a lot of times, you know, through, repetition um we're, we're going to get it next time just stay with it have faith in yourself have faith in your teammates kind of thing um i think he is a tremendous asset to the Penguin community and um as a football coach you know if you send your son there to play ball you're not only going to get um your son is not only going to get hands-on training and great coaching from mike and his staff but I think he, he also helps, uh, as so many of our coaches do, helps mold these guys and the young men, preparing them for life after high school and, and, and in most cases, life after football. All right, let's go to winter. So here we are. This is posting on Tuesday, the first day of winter uh, on Tuesday. So let me just go around the horn with you guys and maybe you guys share some winter sports notes for us. Nick Kukuru, let me start with you. Um, Gloucester hockey, maybe the bright spot you guys are following up there at the times, right at this point for the winter. Yeah. I mean, I got two teams off to pretty hot starts, you know, Gloucester boys hockey, obviously one of them, uh, they, they really exercised some demons last week against Marblehead. Marblehead kind of owned them uh, in recent years that they picked up their first win over them since uh, 2017, 18. 
uh, the, you know, six straight losses they had to Marblehead and uh, in a resounding fashion, an eight to one win. Um, you know, Emerson Marshall had four goals, two assists. Uh, he has nine points in two games already. And um, Brett Cunningham had two goals and four assists. So, you know, Marshall and Cunningham uh, assisted on each other's goals all night and Cunningham has seven points uh, in two games. And, um, you know, his emergence has been huge um, for them. Um, we knew they had Marshall, we knew they had Costanzo, and they've had some supporting cast really step up. You know, Cunningham, one of them, Jack Delaney Jr. got stronger. Uh, Colby Jewell, a sophomore, he looks stronger. And and their defense has held up. You know, Ryan Frady, Robbie Schuster, Tim Marone, uh, Chris Lajacano, that's their, their top four. Uh, D right there, and they've been excellent in the early going. And, um, you know, we've seen a game out of a goalie. Nick Tarantino picked up the win over Marblehead. Uh, I expect him to probably see more of the action, but uh, Riley DeHaan, the backup, uh, he looked good against North Andover as well. Um, and, you know, moving into basketball, Manchester Essex boys off to a hot start. They went 0, and um, they've done it without uh, their best player. A AJ Palazzola was their, uh, you know, all-league point guard a year ago, and uh, he he hurt his shoulder on Thanksgiving against Georgetown on the football field. So he hasn't been in there yet. But, um, you know, the Hornets, they beat Newburyport, and they beat Amesbury, who are both uh, pretty solid teams. Um, you know, Brendan Twombly, who was actually the quarterback uh, for the football team, he, he's he been their leading scorer. I think he's averaging 15 a game through two. Uh Cade first, a sophomore, is kind of establishing himself as a sharpshooter. And um, Patrick Cronin's tall forward, wing player, and he's kind of stepped into a starting role this year, and he's, he's looking good in the early going, too. Um, so we'll see. Uh, next week, uh, they'll be at the Gloucester Holiday Tournament there with Hamilton, Wenham, Danvers, and Gloucester. Uh, that's usually a good take. That's usually anybody's game, and it looks like it might be again uh, this year. That's, that's next Monday and Tuesday, so I'm sure we'll talk about that a bit next week, too. Gotcha. Nick, I think, uh, you know, we can already – mark on our calendars it should be a a must-see game for local hockey fans will be the first uh masco at gloucester game i want to say that's saturday uh january 8th at the tank at 6 p.m yeah, they're they are right now appearing to be uh two teams that might stand out from the rest of the pack at least in the early going yeah, it looks like a pretty good clash, right? But I mean, Masco, I'm assuming the last couple of times I see Masco, their, their depth was a little too much for Gloucester. Gloucester has that, you know, firepower in the top two lines. So that's uh, an interesting matchup for sure. You know, I, I haven't seen either Gloucester's first two games, uh, obviously, but I have seen Masco. And I think you're probably right. Like the top end firepower for Gloucester is probably higher, I think. They don't have anybody on the level of a Marshall or a Costanza. But what they do have is a lot of balance, um, pretty good defense, and they can get scoring really from all four lines. So that'll be an interesting uh, match to see how the two coaches, um, Derek Geary down in Gloucester and Andrew Jackson at Masco, try to uh, play that little uh, game within a game chess match uh, in terms of mixing and matching when they do play. Yeah, and last year that depth wore Gloucester down. So we'll see how that, uh, that goes this year, how they counter it this year. I suppose, Phil, since you followed up on hockey, we should go to hockey. I was going to go to Nick Giannino and basketball, but let's follow oh, up ahead. on hockey. No, let's stay on hockey here. Let's stay on hockey. Let's do it. Let's uh, stay with you, you wanna, Phil. You don't want to put me on ice is what you're saying? Uh, no, let's uh, – no, put the blades on and, and take off. Hop out, hop over those boards and, and deliver us some hockey news. Okay. Well, uh, as I said, I saw uh, Masco this weekend. Uh, they look good. They're fast like they always are. Um, they skate very well. Um, I think AJ Sacco, sophomore, is probably their best all-around player. But they got a lot of talent around him. Chris O'Grady, Richie Garino, the two McMillan brothers, Nick and Matt. Um, you know, on and on and on you can go here. A lot of depth. Um, I saw the backup goaltender, Tristan Dillon, and um, they also have um, Angelo, who, who's the starter who won the opener against Danvers. Danvers has been a bit of a surprise early. They're three and one. They won at uh, Winthrop in overtime on Saturday, which is new, a new overtime format they have. We've already seen a couple of overtime games locally. Um, but that was a good win for Danvers. You know, after losing to Masco in their conference opener, following two wins up in Lowell the previous weekend, they go down to Larson Rink and, and beat, uh, you know, what, what's always a good Winthrop team in a very tough place to play. So for a team that's still learning, and uh, trying to get used to new head coach Kevin Fassett's styles and get into hockey shape and all. It was good for them to pick up two points there on Bobby Joyce's overtime goal. Um, I also saw Beverly. Beverly was coming off of an opening win over Swampskin. They uh, 
fell behind by Wakefield by two goals early. They came back and took a 3-2 lead going into the third period, and then they gave up the tying goal and then the go-ahead goal by Wakefield less than a minute to play. So I think that was, as I wrote, I think that's a good lesson for Beverly to learn that while they have talent to play with a lot of teams, um, I don't think they can take their proverbial skates off the uh, gas pedal. Um, you know, the funny thing is, and both coaches mentioned this to me after the game, uh, Greg Fonzie at Beverly and Mike Geary, the former Essex Tech coach, is now at Wakefield. Um, because there are, and I'll say only, only 40 teams in Division Two hockey, under this new statewide tournament, you have an 80% chance of making the playoffs. There's 32 teams get in. So it's not as crushing a loss for Beverly as it might have been in previous years where, like, oh, there's two points we lost towards the 20 we need to get into the tournament. Now, you just got to be in the top four-fifths of Division Two to get in, essentially, which I'm guessing both teams will do. But I still feel as though Beverly needs to learn from that game. Um, you know, just making smarter pinches. Uh, uh, not take, They took a penalty after going up 3-2, to two, like on the very next shift, which was not smart. Just little small things that can chip away at any momentum you have. Um, that's what they need to stop. Uh, St. John's Prep with a huge opening day win Saturday. Uh, Hingham came in uh, in some quarters anyway as the top ranked team in the state. And the Prep with their backup goalie and one of the top forwards out of the game with sickness blast them eight to two. Um, I think St. John's Prep is going to be very dangerous this year. They get a lot of skill. They got a lot of depth. They can score, which has been their bugaboo in recent years. And they've got veteran presence on defense. So I think uh, the Eagles, even with the the arduous schedule that they play could make a lot of noise. Um, they're hosting the annual Pete Frady's Winter Classic this week, welcoming in uh, BC Hyde, Pope Francis, and da, 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 was Central Catholic, I think. Yeah, Central Catholic support team. So they play that Wednesday and um, Thursday. Essex Tech uh, with a scoreless tie of the weekend. They're 1 0 and 1. Uh, I know Mark Leonard is really happy with what he has over there in terms of depth and talent. Uh, Back-to-back -back shutouts to start the season for their goalie, Kyle Mahan. Uh, Bishop Fenwick dropped a tough two-to-one opener, Arlington Catholic, and it's open. They'll look to rebound this week. Uh, Pingree's already played, I think, nine to ten games. They're on, they're on a winter break now, but they played four games in a span of about 36 hours this weekend in the Brooks-Pingree tournament. They went two-and-two, two, so they're hopefully uh, hitting an upward trend. I think they're now three-and-six or three-and-seven under uh, head coach Danny Gordon. Uh, Swans get looking to get on track. They're 0 2. Marblehead surprising 0 2 after losing to Gloucester and uh, Masco. I mean, two tough teams right off the bat. They play at Lowell Catholic on Thursday. And I think that's everybody. Sounds good. Hey, Nick Giannino, I know last week you missed our podcast because you are on a special assignment outside of Essex County, really traveling, by the way. Yeah. So uh, give us an update on boys' basketball around the North Shore. What, uh, what do you have for us? Sure. Yeah. I, I want to start with a couple teams that played in a few holiday tournaments uh, this past weekend. We had Pingree go down to Connecticut and, and let me get this name of the tournament, right? The Frosty Francis holiday festival. And that was at Kingswood Oxford. They played some really good competition there. Uh, head coach, Steve Gibbs, who's been there quite a while now. He, they usually do these early season uh, tournaments kind of as a tune up, but this year he's got a ton of uh, really, really, good teams on their schedule. He kind of stacked the, the slate. They're playing up a, a conference now in the NEPSAC. Um, they got a couple wins down in that tournament. They dropped one decision, but got two. Seems like they have uh, a pretty solid team, well-rounded. A couple football players on there. Jaden Del Torchio, he was a football guy, right? Yeah, he was. Um, really good yeah, football player. He, he's off to a good start. Uh, Matt Terrio's off to a good start. Then they got, you know, Steve Gibbs' son, Trevor Gibbs, who's a college prospect. They got Elijah Roberts, who's a college prospect. Um, so they seem to have reloaded pretty nicely. They got a lot of different skill sets, and they're off to a three and three start. But again, that's against some really stiff competition, and they haven't had any, you know, blowout losses or anything like that. They've been close games. And then another team that that played in a, another tournament um, down in Florida this past weekend was Salem. They played in the KSA Events Classic in, in Orlando, got to do, uh, you know, some sightseeing. They went to some amusement parks, Disneyland, Universal. I think the, Tom Doyle, the head coach, said they went and saw Spider-Man as a team. So more of a bonding trip for them to kind of get to know each other. It's a really new look team over there, but 
they uh, won all three games. So they're off to a 3-0 and start. Um, Darlene Santiago, who scored over 20 points once and then had, I think, 15 points and 17 points in the other two games. He was named the MVP of that tournament. Um, so they're off to a promising start. I think uh, Tom Doyle has to be pretty excited with that. Then we got um, in the Cape Ann League, Hamilton Wenham. They're, uh, I know Cooper touched on it quickly. They're going to be in that holiday tournament next weekend. But they, um, they're they going to rely heavily on Marcus Norton, who obviously we know him from the football season, had a good year at wide receiver for them. Um, he's off to a really, really good start. He had 30 points and 17 boards in their first win. And then he went for, I think, 25, 13, 5, and 5 steals in their second game. So he's an early candidate for player of the year in that conference. Um, you know, he's going to be doing a lot of their offense for them. But Hamilton Wenham seems like they're going to be tough to beat again in the Cape Ann League. Uh, we can move along to St. John's Prep. I got to see them play. They're um, no real superstars on that team. They're more of a balanced, defensive-oriented team. Uh, they got some height, you know, both Mike O'Brien and uh, who's the other guy I'm thinking of? Kyle Webster. They did a lot of damage against uh, Lawrence and pulling that opening night win off. I know they're, um, you know, on a little bit of a hiatus now with some COVID trouble, so they're going to be off this week. But St. John's Prep, that'll that'll do them good, I think. Hopefully they can get some practices in here. Um, they they got a pretty solid team again. And uh, maybe highlight, well, one more team. I think Masco is off to a really good start. Obviously the quarterback of the football team there, Matt Richardson, he's, uh, he's a good player for them. And they've gotten some impressive wins already, 2-0, I believe. Um, so they're going to be a team to look out for in the NEC now as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I could keep going on with all our teams, but a Beverly too. Beverly, you know, dropped a, a season opener to St. Mary's, a tough St. Mary's team by three points, but got back on track. Willie was at their game against Peabody, and they snuck that one out, right? Right, Willie? Three-point win, I think. Yeah, yeah, three-point win. Yeah, not, uh, you know, a little sloppy on their part, but uh, I think – you know, with a brand new team, a lot of new guys anyway, uh, you know, it's just a matter of getting used to the intensity of the fact that, hey, you've won 30 consecutive games against the current members of your league and you're going to have a bullseye on your back yeah. every single day. I, You know, there was a great quote that Coach Karakutis had. I didn't really have a chance to fit it in the story, but he said, listen, like if those guys revert to Peabody, if they beat us, that's like a Super Bowl to them. And it's true. And that's, you know, Beverly's young players have to get used to that or, you know, they're going to lose some games, which is fine. You know, nobody's saying they have to go undefeated, but it's great if you can learn that lesson. Hey, we have to bring our intensity and still find a way to win largely because Ryder Frost was able to make some big shots. You know, he, he's a guy that kind of plays the forward, but he's a, he's a modern forward. He's a, he's a space and pace kind of guy and, and he can leak out and hit those big jump shots. Uh, you know, he, he's not a guy that's going to be in the paint, uh, uh, you know, lumbering. He's really a great three-point shooter. And, um, you know, he, he made some big threes, I think. He had 23 points, and I think, uh, I don't remember if it was four or five threes, but, uh, you know, Beverly didn't score for almost five minutes in the third quarter, and Peabody was threatening to take the lead for good, and uh, he hit a couple of back-to-back -back triples that kind of kept them off balance so uh, just a sophomore is Ryder Frost I know he's one of those Middlesex magic guys and we know basically everybody that comes out of that program that plays around here goes on to great things so uh, Frost he's a guy to keep an eye on uh, you know certainly uh, this year and, and in the years to come for sure and I think overall Beverly's got a great shooting team in general you know with Gabe Copeland too he was an early candidate for player of the year in the conference heading into the season got off to a little bit of a shaky start but he's Obviously, the guy, guy to watch, very talented, physical. Um, they got Dylan Crowley, who can shoot from the outside, Rook Landman. Uh, the list goes on. So they got some good shooters on that team. You know, you got Matt, you brought up Frosty. Uh, we've had Frosty mentioned twice here in this podcast already. We don't usually have it mentioned at all in any of our podcasts. But I'm thinking of a new nickname for Phil. He's out on the ice all the time, Frosty Stacy. What do you think? Does that, oh. would that you think that would catch on at all, Frosty Stacy? That, oh, might no, more, I mean, my, we'll my, that might more fit my personality when I get <laughs> questions asking me why Mike yeah. Flynn is the coach of the year. <laughs> hey, Matt Williams, maybe you should close us out here with it. We have a few more minutes left with uh, some other sports that you've been uh, on top of here so far this winter. 
Well, I know the girls' basketball. Is anybody going to be able to contain the betting courts? That's that's the real question. I, I see, you know, and, and full marks to the Peabody boys, right? Because I set the spread on that game pretty high. I uh, said to Nick Giannino before the game, I, I wonder if we combine the boys' score and the girls' score after this one, if it'll be pretty close to 500. And uh, the, the Peabody boys found a way to keep it close, and the Peabody girls kind of uh, pulled away quite a bit. So, I mean, I think – you know, Swamps gets a team that can give them some trouble, but haven't already beat Masco uh, the way they did. I, I think that team in Peabody is one to keep an eye on on the girls' basketball side uh, as far as the Northeast Conference is concerned. I know Fenwick is pretty good too, but I'm not sure there's any crossovers. You know, they used to play Masco sometimes, Beverly in some holiday tournaments, but I feel like maybe some of those aren't on the schedule this year, so it'll be hard to compare and cross over. But uh you know, we spent the whole spring talking about those Betancourt girls with the uh, softball season, and it looks like the basketball is going to be more of the same on the girls' side. Uh, I should say Danvers, too. They're off to a 2 and we'll start, the girls. Uh, and Christina Yeba is a, a great kid to keep an eye on. Uh, she missed all of last year with a torn ACL. Yeah. Uh, she missed her softball season, too. You wonder. I mean, that's a team that almost won a state championship. If they have her in the lineup, that might have pushed them over the top. And uh, – she just committed to play softball. I believe it's Southern Maine. So yeah, great news right. uh, for Christina and great to see her back. Uh, Pat Valu's team is always scrappy. You know, they always seem to lead the area in deflections and steals. You know, they, they might not score the basketball uh, with fanciness, but they're dogged uh, on the defensive end. So that's a team that will cause all kinds of disruption, I'm sure, over the course of the season. Gentlemen, we're down to two minutes or a little less than two minutes. Any other final thoughts from any of you guys on uh, on what we've been, what we're looking ahead for this week or whatever? I left yeah, I was... out uh, Swampskit and the boys hoop. I want to just give them a quick shout out because they're off to a pretty solid start as well. And they got a couple, you know, talented players. Obviously, Cam O'Brien, who stood up the football season this year. Um, he's a great player, physical kid, can kind of do a little bit of everything for them. And then Evan Roth has been carrying them too offensively scoring the ball he's another returner for them so Bomska could have a, a pretty solid year too in the in the NEC I think uh, the way head coach Jason Knowles who also coaches the golf team there put it he said um, you know he thinks they can do something special this year which you know you don't hear every season so watch but out for Beverly's, Swampskit a little bit too. Beverly's got Swampskit and Maskell this week that's two uh, big games to watch. Yeah for sure. Nick Kukuru, anything else from you up in the uh, Cape Ann area? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to mention, you know, Re wrestler from my area. So they had the the Sons of Liberty, Sons of Italy. Sorry, not Sons of Li Italy. Sons <laughs> of Italy tournament. Sorry, it's tongue twister for me right now. But they had that over the weekend. A pretty prestigious tournament, over twenty squads, and uh, sophomore Jaden Toppin from Gloucester took home the uh, the tournament title in the two hundred twenty pound weight class. So he's a he's a wrestler to watch out for this season. Only a sophomore, he was an NEC All Star a year ago, and uh, he's only the second Gloucester individual to ever take home a win in that tournament. Um, nice. So that's a good start for him. And speaking of wrestling, I suppose it shouldn't be any surprise to anyone, but the uh, defending state uh, champions from St. John's Prep are off to another unbeaten start this season. Head coach Manny Costa, he of the uh, 700 career wins and counting, uh, has his team on the mats, off doing another terrific job. So, uh, you know, you can follow what the Eagles are, are doing on a weekly basis uh, in the pages of the Salem News. 7-0 and right now. 7-0. Well, to you guys, hope you have a great Christmas, happy holiday and all that. And we'll talk again soon and uh, be safe. And, uh, and of course, for all of our listeners, have a great holiday as well. Get some rest, but uh, get some, have some fun as well. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks, Bill. Merry Christmas.